the church say amen. Stand before you again, Mount Ali. There's some time before the pandemic, several years ago, we stood behind this sacred desk. Thank your pastor for the invitation to do so. Thank God to be home. Church we served for some 30 plus years. I love you, my wife sends her regards. I had a slight, slight headache this morning. My road companion. We'll be on the road again next week. I'll bring you greetings from the Mount Olive Seventh day Adventist Church in Laurenburg, North Carolina. Mount Olive seems to be a very popular name. The church is the third one I've been involved with. Like Ephesus, Shiloh. But it's good to be home. Good to have my mom here with me. Lord, I want to speak to us today. You know, in the church, there are several groups you know, that tend to stand out. Youth, and rightly so, the youth are our future, amen? I believe they're having a youth federation over in Douglas High School. So, singers, musicians, and others sing the focal point beyond just the day that they get. Uh, but we seniors doesn't seem to get a lot of press after Senior Citizens Day. You know, nobody want to hear from us old folks after you just take your one day and that's it for a while till next year. Since they have a youth federation, I figured all of us be left behind here. <laughs> Lord, I want to speak to us today. I want to speak to everyone today, but particularly I want to speak to the seniors. Our text for this morning, turn with me to the Psalms before we pray. Psalms, the first division. We want to reference verses one, two, and three. First division of the Psalms. And it reads thusly. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law doth he meditate day and night. Verse 3 says that he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water, that bringeth forth his fruit in his season, and his leaf also shall not wither. Whatsoever he doeth shall what? Shall prosper. You know, that text reminds me of seniors. God's going to break that down for us. Seniors on their journey to being hoary heads and obeying God doing the heavy lifting in the church, in the family, in society. And though we may try to cover up the evidence, it's really a blessing to be a senior citizen. What do you say? Beyond the discounts. Pray with me. Father, once again, we come with bowed heads. We come with humble hearts. Hi, your man servant behind the cross of Calvary. Let the people not see nor hear me, but see and hear Jesus. Be lifted up, drawing all men unto himself. For us in the worthy name of Jesus, we ask it and do pray. And we give you thanks this holy and blessed Sabbath. 
All God's people said amen, amen, and amen. Well, I want to thank you for that prayer. It really set the tone for this morning. I won't box in seniors by with a number. I won't box them in. Some say 65, AARP say 50. They want to start getting your dues real early. Some say 60. Well, everybody want to be a grandparent, but uh, no one wants to hurry up and get to be one. They love their grandparents, you know, but no one wants to get to that age. Uh, I want. I come this morning to uplift and bring honor to seniorhood. The Bible says in Deuteronomy 34, 9, and Joshua, the son of Nun, was full of the spirit of wisdom. For Moses had laid his hand upon him, and the children of Israel hearkened unto him and did as the Lord commanded Moses. And then to Abraham, it says, and in Genesis 15, 15, and thou shalt go to thy fathers in peace. Thou shalt be buried in a good old age. The Bible called old age good. We all die. Might as well die in a good old age. What do you say? Nobody wants to get old, but nobody wants to die young to avoid it. First Chronicles 29, 28 says that he died in a good old age, full of days, riches, and honor, and Solomon, his son, reigned in his stead. God cares for the aged. Isaiah 46, 4 says, and even to your old age, I am he. And even to the whore hairs, I will carry you. I have made and I will bear, even I will carry and will deliver you. I thank God for that this morning. The New King James Version says, even to your old age, I am he. And even to gray hairs, I will carry you. I have made and I will bear, even I will carry and I will deliver you. Thank God for Jesus this morning. Without leaving anyone out, the Lord wants to speak to us all this morning. The heavy lifting has always been done mostly by the elderly. Why? Because, you know, they have the battle experience. They have the leadership to do the job. They've been on the job. All the elderly are not retired. Some are going back to work. What do you say? Still setting examples in their families and in society. You know, look at Moses. God didn't start using Moses until he was a senior. Moses faced off with Pharaoh. He led the Egypt, the Israelites out of Egypt in his 80s. When Moses died at 120 years old, Joshua took over as a leader with Caleb by his side. These two faithful men who trusted in God started their leadership in their 80s. The world says that, you know, uh, Biden is too old for the job. He's 79. He'll be 80 tomorrow. November 20th is his birthday. But the world said he's too old for the job. Moses, Joshua, and Caleb were just getting started in national leadership at 80 years old. It's well known and it's well documented what God did with Ellen White with just a fourth grade education, but in the hands of God, at her death at 86 years old. Her, these are her literary production now at, 80, at 80, 86. It's what she left behind. A hundred thousand pages of written works. She left behind 24 books still in current circulation. 5,000 periodicals in church manuals that Vintage Review signed at the time, 200 tracts and pamphlets, 2,000 handwritten letters to friends and church members. At the time of her death in 1915, over 107 years ago, the E.G. White estate has still been 
compiling and having compilations of her writings at Dentist Home is one. Councils on diet and food, councils on stewardship. For a total of 130 books currently in print in 2022. This is what God can do at any age if we turn our lives over to him, what do you say? It's good to be a senior, but it's better to be a senior in good health, what do you say? The Apostle John said, beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be what? In health, even as thy soul prospers. Third John 2. But the question must come, why, why did he say above all things? Because if even if you're a rich man, your money will be useless to you if you can't rise from your sick bed to spend it. Health is very important. Even Steve Jobs, you know, he was a, a very rich man. But before he died, you know what he said? He said, it won't do me no good to be the richest man in the cemetery. Just in these last two years, people have died on Forbes' billionaire list who lived into their 80s and 90s. One of them, take this for instance, in terms of having good health and knowing what to do with our funds that God gives to us. A gentleman by the name of Sheldon Adelson, he was a casino king then. He died with $29 billion in assets, $29 billion. Do you know how tall a billion dollars is if you stack it up? If you took a billion one-dollar bills, just stack them up. Going up, do you know how far it will rise? A billion dollars stacked will go 67 miles into the air. Do you know what, what man considers out of space? International distance for outer space is 62 miles. You five miles in the outer space. With just one billion dollars stacked up, the man left 29 billion. If you took 29 billion dollars and stacked them up and pushed them over from here, let's say, let's say just like, let's say Atlanta. 29 billion dollars, what the man had. $29 billion, stack them up and push them over, going westward. Do you know how far you can go walking on money and never have to step on the ground? You can go to Las Vegas, Nevada and never step on the ground. Stack, not lengthwise, edge to edge, stacked up. That's the kind of money the man left when he left here. It's good to be, you know, reach a good old age. It's good to have funds, but God shows us what to do with those funds. What do you say? There's no ATMs in the graveyard. The grave is where you go to make deposits. We don't make no withdrawals in the graveyard until the second coming. What do you say? That's why John said, above all things, he wished above all things that we may have prosper and be in health. James 4.14 says, but what is your life? It is even a vapor that appears for a little time. And then what? It vanishes away. You know, he gave a very good example. You know, when you go outside on a cool morning like this morning was earlier, and you just blow a vapor, it shows just for a moment, doesn't it? And then it disappears. James said, that's, that's the way your life is. And those precious text applies to anyone, even the youth aren't here for long. So surely us seniors, we know how to number our days. Moses said in Psalm 90, 12, verse 12, a Psalm of Moses, not of David. It says, teach us to number our days 
or value what little time we have left and spend it glorifying God and helping others. What do you say? Today, we're certainly blessed to reach 80 years of age. But God's ideal for us was no death at all. Even after sin, the biblical record shows that the man's average age after sin now was 912 years. You take all the patriarchs from Adam, go all the way down to Noah, before man was allowed to start eating meat, and average their ages, is averages out to 912 years on the average. Enoch received what God intended for all humanity, eternal life, what do you say? Adam enjoyed good health and lived for nine generations. What was Adam doing for those nine generations? Spirit of Prophecy tells us in Patriots and Prophets, page 82. Listen to what she says about Adam. Because he lived 930 years or something like that, I believe. She says, for nearly a thousand years, Adam lived among men. He had been commanded to instruct his children or his posterity in the way of the Lord. And he carefully treasured what God had revealed to him and repeated to his succeeding generations, to his children and children's children, to the ninth generation. Adam has seen some things. He passed it down from generation to generation to generation. Adam died just prior to, I mean, wasn't very many. He didn't see up to the flood. Lemek, Noah, just short of them. But most of the other generations saw Adam lie. They had no excuse for the antediluvians world, the mindset that they had. God, you got a man here that had no navel. Where do you think he came from? Adam was still alive when Methuselah was born. He was 687 years old when Methuselah was born. And he wouldn't die for another 243 years at the age of 930. Methuselah worked and preached uh, for 969 years. What about seniors now? We just get, we get 80 and we figure why we finished. Methuselah worked and preached for 900. This is what Spirit of Prophecy says in Spiritual Gifts, page 65 and 70. This is what she says about Methuselah. Methuselah, the son of Enoch. Enoch, Enoch was his dad. The one that was translated out of here. The son of Enoch listened to the preaching of his grandson, Noah. Noah's, Noah's father was Lemon. Methuselah was Noah's grandfather. Methuselah listened to Noah and assisted him in building the ark. Can you believe that? And joined Noah in preaching. Preach, Noah wasn't just preaching by himself. His grandfather, Methuselah, joined in his preaching. Noah and his family were not alone in fearing and obeying God. Methuselah, the grandfather of Noah, lived until the very year of the flood. Right up to the flood. Methuselah died just prior to the rain. Preaching and assisting in building the ark right alongside Noah. God's word will not return void. Methuselah's journey, like Adam, was completed as a senior, well over 900 years, preaching and building. You know, they say, you know, they say black men won't go to the doctor. My mother, he tell the folks at the senior citizen center, she told me, she, told, she said, I'm my son. 
He go to the doctor every time he feels something. And I do, I refuse to pay insurance premiums and not use the doctor. I don't know when I'm going to check out of here, but I know one thing. They won't be telling me, Mr. Reed, we could have saved you if you had come in a little bit early. They, 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 they won't be telling me that. Every time I feel something, I'm up in there. Don't, they, when they see me, they say, well, Mr. Reed, every, everybody had that. You know, try, try to say, well, you try to tip me, well, you're old. Old folks get aches and pains, all right? <laughs> and doctor, check this out. Well, everybody get that. Mr. Reed. But well, as long as you clear that up with everybody got out there. <laughs> you check it out first. <laughs> we dispel that thing about black folks don't go to black men don't go to the doctor. No, no. King David said in our text for this morning, and I want to read that text to you in, in the New Living Translation. That text says this. Listen to the Psalm 1, 1 through 3 in the, the New the, the Living Bible. David says this, Oh, the joy of those who do not follow evil men's advice, who do not hang around with sinners, scoffing at the things of God. But they delight in doing everything God wants them to do. And day and night are always meditating on his laws and thinking about ways to follow him more closely. They are like trees along a riverbank, bearing luscious fruit each season without fail. Their leaves shall never wither. All they do shall prosper. You know, Christ often used things in nature to make scripture an object lesson. A tree is an excellent object lesson in nature because everyone's familiar with the tree. We're familiar with them. They've been around since the third day of creation. Amen? Genesis 1 uh, verses 12 and 13 said this about trees. And the tree yielding fruit whose seed was in itself after his kind. And God saw that it was good, and the evening and the morning was the third day. Tree been around since the third day. And I liked to climb trees when I was a boy. And I went to my hometown recently. I've been there all the time called my mother's death. But one day I went by and saw a tree that I used to climb as a boy. Some 50 years ago. We talk about a half a century since I was up in that tree. But the tree is still that. Tree remind me of scenes, longevity. Tree the like seniors in, the, in that they live a long time. The oldest man to live, as we know, was Methuselah. 969 years according to Genesis 5:27. And one of the oldest trees alive today is ironically named the Methuselah tree. It's a bristle cone pine tree out in White Pine, out in uh, White Mountain, California. How old is the Methuselah tree? Now, scientists have looked at the tree for years and they have dated it at 4,553 years old. Now, that's some other trees that had been here older than the Methuselah tree, but they cut them down. But they dated the Methuselah tree. You know, that means that this tree started germinating in the 29th century, B.C. It's a testament to the power of God to sustain. This tree started germinating in 2832 B.C. Now, let's put that in perspective. Before the Great Pyramids and the Sphinx of Giza, Egypt, the Methuselah tree in California was a tree. It sprouted up. Before Joseph went to Egypt as a slave, the, that the tree in California 
that was a lie. It was a great tree when David sat down and wrote the very psalm that we use for our text today. There's a tree in California that was alive when David sat down and wrote it. When Daniel and the Hebrew boy went captive in Babylon in 605 BC, the Methuselah tree was alive, a great tree. When Christ was born in 4 BC, there's a tree in California that's alive today. That's 4,800 years old. If the scientists know what they're talking about. They've been going all over their community for years. Empires have risen and fallen, but the Methuselah tree still stands alive, a living, visible witness as to the power of God to sustain and create life. Trees grow all their lives. The rule of a tree is grow or die. There's no such thing as a tree that just stacks. You know, seniors grow all our lives. That was a sanctification process, but grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To him be glory both now and forevermore. Second Peter 3.18. We have a sanctification of growth. Trees like seniors are productive. How so, Brother Elder? We get maple syrup from trees. We get almond milk, coconut milk from trees. I thought I might get an amen or two from the almond milk drinkers. Rubber for your cars come from trees. Your house comes from a tree. Your bed, your kitchen table in all likelihood comes from a tree. Trees are like seniors. They are contributors. Trees clean carbon dioxide out of the air. Trees are necessary for pollution. That's why cities have ordinances that are going to allow you to cut them down. Trees put water moisture back into the air. You know, the Amazon rainforest has its own climate. And the moisture that causes rain comes right back out of the trees. And they're cutting the trees down, left and right, miles and square miles of it every day. That's why climate warming is a real thing. Man is causing it. Trees prevent mudslides from coming down on villages. Trees are on a journey of life as soon as the seed hits the ground. A tree is obedient to God, and a tree grows only what God says grow. I've never seen an apple tree with oranges on it, not unless it was a prank. At creation, God used a tree to test man, to see if he would be loyal to God and obey him. Genesis 2. 16 and 17 says, and the Lord God commanded the man saying of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat, amen? But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it, for in the day that thou eat of thereof, thou shalt surely die. God used a tree at creation. Create the tree, trees, third day. Created man at the end of that creation week and use a tree to test him to see if he would be loyal to him. During the flood of Noah's day, God used a tree to save Noah and his family. God used a tree to save all mankind, but we came from those. The ark was made of gopher wood. And it was waterproof with pitch. Then God said, pitch it. What is pitch? Mm -hmm. you, make, you get pitch, you make pitch from, from tar, tree sap. You ever heard is pitch dark? You see that tar they put on the road out there? That stuff is black as black as get. So, folks, it's pitch dark out here. I can't see a thing. God said, pitch the ark. 
waterproofing. King David says in the Psalms, the first division, that in a special way, you can be like a tree. An obedient tree in the hands of God, but only if you not listen to the counsel of sinners. The secular world is not, 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 not spending time with God. You're going to be like that tree. You're going to be obedient to God. You've got to spend time with God to be this tree that David is talking about. Secular world isn't interested in that. You know, I often wonder why in this Laodicean age, it's so hard to get people to come to church and bring their children with them. Hmm? Everything is free. Food is free. No child when we have food, do we? Music is free. But to our invitation, people are always too busy. But, I, but, but listen, look at, look at this, this contrast. People are always busy, always got something to do when you send out an invitation to come. But I look back in February of this year, the Super Bowl church had no problem getting folks to come to worship. Hmm? The worship committee they look for the largest venue they can find. In fact, they tore down on a stadium here in Atlanta, perfectly in good condition. Tore it down, moved the church out of the way, bought the church down the street and built a brand new place. So they could get up. They could have a Super Bowl worship. Hmm? So they look for the biggest venue, the biggest temple they can find. And they always pack the house. Look how many chairs we got. People attend and they pay to come. Ours is free. You know how much it costs for a Super Bowl ticket? Six to eight thousand dollars per seat. The highest amount ever paid for a Super Bowl ticket was $33,000 for one seat. We don't have skyboxes to accommodate families, but they do. But they charge anywhere from $200,000 to $2 million, and catering is not involved. And their temple holds anywhere from seventy to 100000 and they're always sold out. People say they're tired of Zoom church. Super Bowl had no problem getting folks to come virtually. The ratings, 96 million Americans were watching the Super Bowl on television. In 2015, 114 million people watched it on television to watch the Seattle Seahawks and the New England Patriots, Super Bowl 49. People say church is too long. Super Bowl services last four hours. Five and six hours with the preliminaries and nobody falls asleep in the service. I know some toll will start sliding back up under the kids on that. God wants his people to be single focused. Single focused on his soon return with no distractions. What do you say? We can idolize anything. He doesn't want us idolizing anything. He wants us to be what? Like a tree. He says, oh, the joy of those who do not follow evil men's advice, who do not hang around with sinners scoffing at the things of God, but they delight in doing everything God wants them to do. And day and night, always meditating on his law and thinking about ways to follow him more closely, not mocking the things of God, but studying at the feet of Jesus. 
God allowed a pandemic to come, which slowed the world down. But the question always comes, how did we use the pandemic time? Did we study to show ourselves approved under God to be like a tree? Or did we worship in the temple of the sports temples and all these kinds of things? Where, where were we during the pandemic time? Or were we in the materialistic world chasing mammon? What were we doing during the pandemic time? Were we sitting at home lamenting that we couldn't be back in church to get church back as usual? God didn't want the, the church back as usual. The church wasn't doing anything before the pandemic. Church wasn't doing all it was supposed to do before the pandemic. That's why God allowed the pandemic to shut everything down. Let's reset. Let's reset. Let's reset. Let's come back in again. Let's come back in right. Not, not, not just stay home in a little minute. I wish I could wish things were like they were. You remember like how the church just this is a whole different setup here, isn't it? We, we remember the good old days here in Mount Island. But God wants us to excel beyond the good old days. God doesn't want us to lament and come in. You know, I asked a question uh, in a message. Uh, I don't think it was one of them. At the, I, I don't think it was at the message I did at the conference last week. Uh, but one of the sermons I had where I just hypothetically, if the Lord should ask me, where do you, I'm, I'm going to give you something, James, uh, that I hadn't given many people. This is hypothetical. Where in your past would you like me to go back and start you over again? So today I talk about these good old days. So just, do, just sit down and do a little reflecting. Think about your life and just give me a point. We'll take you back to that point and drag you forward. You no, know, I tell the Lord what I tell him is I reflect, Lord, I'm good. I'm good right where I am. Well, they ain't no good old days in my past. And I'm not interested in going back to any of them. I want to go back to a period of time when I didn't know the Sabbath. Go back to a period of time when I didn't know the Lord. Go back to a period of time when I didn't know about tithing and often being, being obedient to God. Back to a time out there cutting a rug on the dam. But what, 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 who want to go back to that foolishness? I'm good. Not, I'm not where I need to be. I'm growing in grace. But I don't want to take no steps backwards. A tree is a silent, visible witness of the care of its creator. He said they are like trees along a riverbank bearing luscious fruit. Each season without fail. You know, if it doesn't rain, an apple tree would not bear apples, pecans, and pears. But a tree by a river always bears a gift fruit. Their leaves never wither. A tree giving cooling shade. And all they do shall prosper. How so? How does it prosper? You know, a healthy tree needs certain things to grow. A healthy tree needs good soil, lots of nutrients, plenty of sunshine, and most importantly, trees love water. The best place for a tree to be planted is next to a river. A tree can send its roots down deep, find that water, and not be concerned about when it's going to rain. You, you found a tree, the Methuselah tree is in California. It's, it's concerned about rain, even though it lived 4,000 years. But a tree next to a river, ain't worried about no rain. They ain't worried about no drought. A tree has a root system that runs into that soil. It anchors itself against the, the wind torrents, drawing that water and nutrients up to the branches. And as long as that tree stayed rooted, mm, it's grounded, connected to the earth, it will prosper. And as long as we stay rooted and grounded in Christ like a tree, we will prosper. What do you say? The Lord said, I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abides in me and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. But without me, you can do nothing. 
I'm closing, friends. God used a tree to, a tree to secure our eternal salvation. The cross of Calvary. Jesus hanging there, sh shedding his precious blood for the sins of the whole world. And for those who accept that sacrifice. In heaven, there's a tree. The tree of life. Which the Father gives to secure our immortality. It bears a different fruit every month. It will never fail to prosper and bear fruit because God has placed it on a river that runs right through the middle. What do you say? We want to be like those trees. Winston Churchill withstood the Nazi regime. He served in the English parliament was prime minister until he was 81. We're talking about seniors. He was prime minister of England until he was 81 years old. Churchill. Churchill was a statesman. Churchill was a military officer. Churchill was a historian. Churchill was a writer who died at the age of 90. Over a million mourners lined the streets of London. Ambassadors from 112 nations attended his funeral. His body lie in state in Westminster Hall for three days. Over 321,000 people filed past the coffin to pay respect. And over 350 million Europeans watched his funeral on TV. Moses withstood Pharaoh and the Egyptian regime. He served as a leader of Israel starting at age 80 till his death at 120. Moses was a statesman. Moses was a military officer. Moses was a historian. Moses was a writer. Yet, when he died on Mount Nebo, Moses had the smallest funeral. Not a single human was present to comfort him in his last days. Seventh-day Adventist Bible commentary says he died in the arms of God. Angels were his pallbearers. They buried him, and God himself was present for the funeral. Spirit of prophecy says, angels of God buried the body of Moses, the faithful servant, and washed over the lonely grave. But he was not long to remain in the tomb. Christ himself with the angels who had buried Moses came down from heaven to call forth the sleeping saint. The power of the grave had never been broken before. No human being had ever been resurrected from the grave. And all who were in the tomb, Satan claimed as his captives, never to be released. Jude 9. Point where Satan contended for the body of Moses. Jesus came to do something that had never been done before. That's break the power of death and resurrect a human being from the dead. Deuteronomy 34, 5 through 7 describe this scene saying this. So Moses, the servant of the Lord, died in the land of Moab, according to the word of the Lord. And he buried him in a valley in the land of Moab, over against Beth Beor, but no man knoweth of his sepulcher unto this day. And Moses was at 120 years old when he died. His eyes was not dim, and his natural force was not abated, nor was his natural force abated. 
Moses died with good eyes. All of his natural forces were in place. At 120 years old. The spirit of prophecy says that God concealed the grave site of Moses to prevent the people from committing idolatry by setting up an altar at the site and start it and start to worship. But God concealed the site until the Lord came and resurrected. Several obstacles may come in our way, friends of mine, as we try to spread the gospel. But age should never be an option to work it for the Lord. I just came this morning just to uplift seniorhood. Just to let us know that we're just at the beginning. 80, you're 85, 90, you're just at the beginning. Of what God can do with you, within the spirit of the thing. He understands we're flesh. He takes all that into account. But he can use every soul in him at any age. I want to close with this. Stories told of a, an elderly preacher. He preached a sermon one. He was in one of these churches where the, the deacons hire and fire the pastors. He preached a sermon, aged pastor. At the conclusion of that sermon, one of the deacons came up to him and said, uh, I think it's time for a change. We appreciate the service that you've rendered over the years, but it's pretty obvious that uh, we need to change out. So we'll be, we'll be having a meeting and we'll, we'll be moving on. Said it right after the service. The aged pastor's countenance fell and his heart was broken at these words, realizing that he had much more to offer the Lord. As the deacon walked off, there was a little boy standing behind the deacon, waiting for his turn to come up and talk to the pastor after the message had concluded. Standing, standing just out outside and as the deacon walked off, the little boy came up. He had been listening to the sermon, very intently. He said, Pastor, do you think if I be a good boy, I could someday be a preacher? Words of the child uplifted the spirit of the preacher. Words he needed to hear of confirmation. Lord sent a child with encouraging words. He didn't listen to it. Think if I'd be a good boy, I could be a preacher. Pastor looked down at the child. He said, Yes, Robert. You be a good boy. I think the Lord will certainly use you to be a preacher. Some years later, dignitaries from around the world was gathering for a film. Kings and queens, ambassadors, Prime Minister, heads of state, for this world renowned evangelist who had worked all through Africa as a missionary and saving souls throughout the entire continent and the world. His name was Robert Muffet. Look him up. The same. Little boy that encouraged the past. You think if I be a good boy, Lord could use me 
Are you a preacher? The age passed a long day by now. But this powerful, world renowned evangelist being laid to rest in the presence of dignitaries got his encouragement when age passed that the church was getting ready to put out the rest. We say that to say to us, don't let anyone say what you're able to do. Only the ones say what you're capable of doing. If you're in the hands of God, if you stay in the hands of God, he will use you. You will be like a tree. Don't take the advice of sinners and scorn. Go mocking the things of God. Be encouraged. That soon and very soon, we're going to see the king. But in the meantime, God has a plan for you in the works of salvation. What do you say? Father, once again, we come bow heads, we come with humble hearts. We just thank the Lord to affirm those that have been on the battlefield for so many years. It's asking the Lord that you continue to uplift and encourage and strengthen. You set example for those that are coming along, the youth that are the future of the church. Continue to strengthen us, we pray. For it's in the word of the name of Jesus, I ask it and give you thanks today. Amen, amen, and amen. God bless you. Church, say amen. Amen. Yes, what a mighty word from God through his servant today. Thank you, Elder Reed, for bringing such a message for us. There may be a youth day somewhere, but there's a senior day going on here today. Come on, somebody. And uh, according to AARP, I slide in there. Just I just made the cut. I'll, I'll accept it. Praise God for that. Um, it is good to have been in the house of the Lord. Thank God for the message. I pray that it finds its place in our hearts and that we will be trees planted by the river of life. Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Um, we're getting ready to close out. Um, pray for our musician, um, Brother Eli. He wanted to let you know he didn't want to leave early, but he has to attend a funeral. And so I meant to pray for him uh, in our prayer, and it, it slipped my thoughts. but. Please remember him in prayer as he um, provides service for the funeral of someone that he knows. And um, I want the message to stay on your hearts, but please forgive me because I don't want the pastor to come back and say, I gave that boy one thing to do and he did not do it right. And so I had Lance trying to get me and, and, I, and then Quan, she's always correcting me and I always catch my text late. So, to add to the confusion, I'm just going to read to you what the pastor said. And these are his words. Good afternoon, sir. I will be traveling to campground for the executive committee meeting tomorrow evening and Sunday. We need to have a short call business meeting this coming Wednesday at 6.20 p.m. to choose the two names for lay advisory committee. We have to have it in by November the 30th. So that's where that date comes from, okay? We need everyone to join promptly at 6.20 so we can finish before 7 p.m. Have a blessed Sabbath, amen. So you heard it straight from our pastor and so we will convene then. So it fits right in with the message. Don't let nobody tell you what you know you know, amen. Amen. Shall we stand and uh, let's have our benediction. May God bless us um, as we end today. Heavenly Father, we are thankful for what we've heard. Thankful for taking us back to a familiar passage that needed to be revived in our minds. Um, 
that we need to be uh, trees that have been pruned by you and that we may be able to help somebody. That it doesn't matter how old we are, we still have life and we can share what you have given to us. Thank you for this message, dear Lord. Now help us to do what you've asked us to do. Help us not to become weary in well-doing. Bless us until you come. Keep us, dear Father, in your care. And may our peace never be disturbed. For Jesus is our peace. Now unto him that is able to keep us from falling, the text says. And the other text says that we may grow in the grace and the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord, we need all of that. Keep us until we meet again. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. You may consider yourselves dismissed. And we will see you on Wednesday at 6.20 p.m.